Sustaining us is made possible by Fireheart Pictures and viewers like you. Thank you. Hello and thanks for joining us for sustaining us here on KLCS PBS. I'm David Nazar. What is a good education worth these days? In this case, the academic skills that can empower our youth to succeed here in the U.S. and have the opportunity for a good future. Often this can begin with a good high school curriculum, then a two or four year college degree or an even more ambitious goal of higher ed. For some, this formula is easy to achieve. For others, there are obstacles and challenges that can prevent youngsters from getting the education they deserve. However, what if there were a new type of school that gave everybody, all students from all backgrounds and all walks of life, a new opportunity to succeed, no matter what their zip code or their socioeconomic status. And that is where we begin our broadcast. This is the intersection of Vermont and Manchester in South Los Angeles, an intersection with a complicated history. In 1992, after the Rodney King verdict, thousands of angry residents took to these streets in what is commonly known as the LA riots. Well, decades later, parts of this South LA neighborhood are still somewhat of a wasteland. Abandoned stores, empty lots, blighted streets and sidewalks. Over the years, many real estate developers, business interests, companies, they ignored this neglected area. A lot of promises that ultimately never really materialize. Well, some of that is about to change, or at least on Vermont and Manchester. A new school is being built out here. Not just any school, this is going to be Seed LA, an urban public boarding school like never witnessed before in Southern California. A college preparatory curriculum based upon things like science, technology, engineering, the arts, mathematics, transportation, the humanities, and life skills a boarding school for a community of kids that might otherwise not have had this option. Seed LA is just the fourth school of its kind in the nation to be part of this unique and innovative education project, joining the Seed School of Washington, DC, the Seed School of Maryland, and the Seed School of Miami. This is a public school, 100% free. The money for Seed LA is courtesy of a public-private partnership that includes some very generous philanthropists, tax credits, help from LA Metro, the city of LA and the county of Los Angeles. SEED is an acronym for Schools for Educational Evolution and Development. 400 students beginning in ninth grade are going to eventually live here on campus five days a week in a 24-hour learning environment. LA County Supervisor Holly Mitchell helped bring SEED to Los Angeles. My predecessor um, actually began the process of looking at what it would look like to have a publicly funded, public-private partnership, if you will, for a boarding school right in the middle of South LA. A boarding school that would um, help train our future leaders in STEM, in technology, uh, in transportation, in the humanities. And a boarding school, unlike as a West Coast girl, <laughs> born and raised, um, was really truly available to all including kids in L.A. County who may be systems touched, either touched by our juvenile um, um, detention system, our child welfare services, our foster care system, or if they have a parent who's been systems touched. So that's a population I think that you don't think, who, who don't believe that they really have access to a boarding school education. Mitchell represents the second supervisorial district of Los Angeles and several parts of unincorporated L.A. County. Supervisor Mitchell says her district is kind of a microcosm of the landscape of California with what she says is one of the most diverse electoral and socioeconomic districts in the entire U.S. Supervisor Mitchell knew this was a community that desperately needed an education option like the SEED school. I was also taken by really the focus of SEED in terms of the kinds of students that they are nurturing. Uh, the kinds of families that are attracted to their model of boarding school education. Um, and so it's a unique space in South LA. 
the actual footprint where the campus will be has has interesting history for Angelenos. It's it's a, a, a intersection um, that was directly impacted by the 1992 uprising. It's an intersection that has been vacant since then. So it's a constant reminder of a sense of loss in our community. It's a piece of property that the community has been promised over and over again was gonna be an asset. And there have been ribbon cuttings and promises that were unkept. So to think about that physical land and, and what this amazing new benefit will be, um, I think will say a lot to the residents of South Los Angeles that it is gonna become a space, a nurturing space for all of LA County's kids to be able to see their way to a future. Sofia Echevarria has found a way to her future. After a road well-traveled, Sofia spent much of her childhood in crime-ridden Washington, D.C. in the 90s, where much of the D.C. school system ranked near lowest in the nation. And yet, Sofia eventually graduated from Seed, Washington, D.C. She talks about her journey. It wasn't until I was maybe six years old, five or six years old, that I began to realize that my parents didn't have a good marriage. And a lot later, I learned that my father was still dealing with addiction, uh, with crack. And that's something that my parents fought over and it caused a lot of strife in their relationship and it ended up bleeding over into our family lives. When Sophia was in the sixth grade, her life was about to dramatically change for the better. We had a visitor, we had two visitors come to my elementary school, West Elementary School in Washington, D.C. And they told us that they were starting a new school and that it was going to be the first public charter boarding school in the country. And I didn't really know what a charter school was, but I knew what a boarding school was. However, after Sophia's mom learned more about the program and even attended an information session with the Seed School, she was convinced this was the best decision for Sophia to be part of this new and innovative Seed program. Although there was now the process of being selected. Then there was a lottery later that year. This is back in 1998. And I think I was number 13 in the lottery. And my number got pulled. The luckiest number in the world for Sophia. Her life changed forever. And most critical in all this was the idea instilled into Sophia and her C classmates that higher education was the probability. The biggest change I saw in myself while attending SEED was that, so no one in my immediate family had gone to college or university or kind of really completed any education past high school. And it's not that I didn't think I couldn't go to college. It was more so that I began to feel like I'm supposed to go to college. A goal realized this once troubled inner city girl from the tough streets of Washington, D.C. Now, an amazing young woman was accepted to one of the best universities in the nation, Princeton. Today, I am the alumni representative to the board of the Seed School of Los Angeles, and it's the inaugural board. And I, I really feel like everything has come full circle, and I'm so glad to take all of my experiences that I had as a student when I was at Seed when I was younger, and to have those experiences mean something that constructs an even better experience for this crop of students. Ruth Stalford is the chair of the Seed School of Los Angeles County Board of Directors. Everyone understands academics, right? You know, everyone understands math, English, science, all of those kinds of things. But to really reach your potential, you need to be able to fire on all cylinders. And that's what life skills are. Ruth says she had heard about this great program in Washington, D.C., the nation's first urban public boarding school. So there is um, a robust program around restorative justice, around uh, resolving conflict, which is very, very important. And also just being able to have informed discourse, right? And to be able to sort of dial back some of the temperature that is out there, right? So that we can discuss things in a way that allows us to actually solve problems. Seed definitely invested in Sophia. 
regardless of the circumstances that we may have been born into, we have every right to possibility. You deserve a chance. You deserve an opportunity to see how far you can go. So why not take advantage of as many resources as you can to see what you can do with yourself. And joining me now to discuss this further is Leslie Pohl. Leslie is a CEO of the Seed Foundation. Also joining our panel is Stephanie Wiggins. Stephanie is the CEO of LA Metro. Thank you so much, both of you, for being here. It's an honor. Thank you, David. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Stephanie, let's begin with you. Two-part question. First, talk about LA Metro, exactly what LA Metro does. Your buses are everywhere, your rail is everywhere, the subway is everywhere. And then obviously, what is a transportation agency? What is LA Metro doing involved with SEED? Sure, thank you, David. Uh, we are a planner, designer, builder, and operator for the country's largest, most populous county in the United States. Uh, we have bus and rail, as you've mentioned. We have regional bike share and express lanes, among other services. And we serve more than 10 million people. Uh, nearly one fourth of California's residents are in LA County and they live and work and play within our service area. So why we are involved with SEED, it really has to do with workforce development and a pipeline. Uh, the transit industry as a whole has been experiencing this shortage of highly skilled workers. In addition to, you know, we, we experienced the silver tsunami. We have a number of uh, employees who are retirement age. We have a unique opportunity partnering with the County of Los Angeles and the Seed Foundation to really be part of exposing, uh, providing awareness, intentionally about transit careers, transportation careers for um, the community of Seed LA, which is really an incredible program uh, that really helps create and develop uh, students to be prepared for college. And we have a number of career opportunities at Metro that we wanna expose them to. And Stephanie, another part to that question, because obviously there are many seed partners, there's sort of this public-private partnership. I had talked a bit about it in our field report. Can you just talk a little bit more about some of the partners that you work with? Well, infrastructure is really a global issue. And there is a ground transportation, public transportation, which is within our area of focus, but there are other aspects of infrastructure that we work with um, that we have an opportunity as we focus on STEM education and awareness about infrastructure roles because it's a, it's a global issue. So we work with partners, obviously in LA County, uh, County of Public Works. We work at the federal level with the US Department of Transportation. We work at the state level with um, Caltrans in particular, as well as uh, the California Transportation Commission, but we also work with private sector uh, industries, uh, private sector companies and firms that are in the engineering discipline, they're in the construction discipline, they're in the ar architectural discipline. So there are a number of partners in infrastructure that we work with on a daily basis. And talking about partners, Leslie, you have many partners, including LA Metro with C. Talk about some of that public-private uh, collaboration. Yeah, you know, I think that the Seed School of Los Angeles is a, an, ex an excellent example of it takes a village, right? Like, so I think we typically use that phrase when we're talking about it takes a village with children, but it takes a village to raise up a seed school. And so um, I think that there are both the philanthropic community, as in when I look across the Los Angeles landscape, has been a tremendous partner. Um, I think community-based organizations, they have been a tremendous partner. I just think um, individual organizations within the community, the County of Los Angeles, like, like the, the success of SEED really is, it's a, it's a shared success. We, we, the SEED Foundation has the privilege of actually being the operator and partnering with the local board to run this school. But really, this is the work. Um, of a very diverse group of thought partners and decision makers across Los Angeles County. Um, and I think that, you know, all 
like like all will see like their handprint in this. Like we've just needed an entire village to raise this project about literally out of the ground. Leslie, how exactly does a student get chosen for seed? Or I probably should rephrase the question, how do students and families choose seed? In the field report, I also mentioned there's kind of a lottery system. Talk more about this entire dynamic. Yeah, I think it's really about choice. I, I think I'll start there because, you know, I think I'm one of four girls and my mom knew something about each of their girls. My mom and dad knew something about their girls and, and it caused them to choose different schools. And I think so first, it's first, first and foremost, like we believe that families know something about their children. They know something about what they need, something about what they want for them and what they aspire for them. And so first, I think a family identifies that a five day a week, 120 hour public boarding school with a STEM focus and with a partnership with Metro and a partnership with other folks, like, like some family says, that's the option for this one young person. So first it starts with choice and then um, because we are a charter school in the, in California, anytime we get more applications than we have slots, we have to do a lottery. And so families will go into the lottery um, and they will get selected through the lottery. Um, but again, uh, it starts with choice and then it starts and then it goes to the lottery and that's how families get in. I think you um, asked a question earlier or when we when we spoke earlier about some other preferences and that we are, we have the opportunity to give a weighted preference um, to young people who are um, considered resilient. And that's just, that just really means young people who have faced some challenges um, and are resiliently pursuing, persevering, persevering through them. But, um, but we can give a preference to resilient youth in Los Angeles. Speaking of that resiliency, Leslie, and then we will get to Stephanie. Uh, I know with resiliency, the school does give priority to students who, if I'm not mistaken, have experienced homelessness, foster care, possibly with a probation, child welfare, um, or students who have a parent who was or possibly is incarcerated. Is that part of the priority or, or are you going to try to reach out to other students as well? Certainly many students in underserved communities, you know, lives can be tough these days. Yeah, so first and foremost, we are open to any young person um, in Los Angeles County. Um, and then um, by, by way of lottery, if you actually have, um, if you had some contact with um, the Department of Children and Family Services and a number of other um, preferences, we will, you will get a weighted preference. So yeah, so we are giving a preference. Um, we, it is our desire to ensure that SEED actually serves um, families for whom it will make a significant difference. Um, but again, we're open to all young people in California, I mean, in, in Los Angeles County. We actually will do outreach across the county. Um, we look forward to actually having um, a significant amount of the young people who live in that community attend the school because there is power, right? Um, and seeing, um, being in that community and looking at that project and saying, you know what, that's our school. My young person goes to that school. So we will give preference. Um, it is a weighted, um, it is a weighted preference and it just gives someone um, a better chance of getting picked in the lottery. Stephanie, the, the location of where this school is being built, it's historic, uh, Manchester and Vermont, neighboring obviously Florence and Normandy, the intersection, some say it's infamous with the historical ramifications. Obviously these intersections in the aftermath of the LA riots after the first Rodney King verdict. Specifically, why was this area chosen for the seed school? Talk about that. Sure, well, from a transportation perspective, the Vermont corridor is our second busiest transit corridor in the entire county. So we know there's a, a high need community along the Vermont transit corridor and a high need for higher quality transit options. And so it's a perfect opportunity to align our desire to improve transit options in that corridor. It's actually the Vermont transit corridor project is in our sales tax measure that's been approved by the voters, coupled with the, the supervisor for that district that had identified this vacant property that had been vacant really since the civil unrest of, of 1992. And, you know, it married with our desire to provide better quality transit service with our need 
to really develop a, a pipeline opportunity for careers in transportation with the County of LA's desire to really revitalize this vacant land and uh, to also have an opportunity for it to be a mixed use site. There's gonna be housing adjacent to uh, the, the Seed LA School. Uh, we want um, a grocery store, we want neighborhood serving retail, and it really is the type of transformational opportunity that brings together multiple benefits for this community. So it was really, again, working in collaboration with our partners in the county that this site uh, was selected. You're David, can I, can, can I actually interrupt for one second? Because I, when you listen to Stephanie actually sort of do that list, right, of the benefit, um, and then you ask the question, and if I go back to your question about resilient youth, like how much, like how much more, um, like when you think about resilient youth, right? Youth who have actually experienced homelessness or some housing insecurity, youth who have had some contact with the Department of, Ch Department of Children and Family Services, youth or families who have had some contact with a probation officer or youth who have a, who've had an immediate family member who's been incarcerated. Like, like how much, like what a benefit that they actually would get a preference. Right, like, like when you sort of think about just the, the beauty of this project, of this complete project, um, I think you want your resilient youth, right? You want, you want to actually feel like, you know what? I actually could actually aspire, I could, I could benefit from this tremendous work that the city and the county are doing at this site. Leslie, also talk about Life after seed, in other words, for your students, how do you work with them after they graduate? Is there networking? Do you follow the students after their uh, high school, boarding school graduation? What's the process there? Yeah, you know what? I actually want to back map from something that Stephanie said earlier um, when she talked about the pipeline needed to actually build the workforce in Los Angeles County. And so if I sort of back map from, okay, so there is a needed pipeline, well then, some of those folks that we need actually will need to actually have certain expertise and some of them will have to have gone to college and graduated and attained a degree. And so part of the answer to that is SEED. We're not the complete answer, um, but we are part of the answer. Um, SEED believes that every young person should have an opportunity. There should be a moment in time when they're sitting around the dinner table with their mom, their dad, their grandma, their aunt, and they open up a letter that says you, and I guess maybe it's not a letter anymore, they open up an email or a text message that says you've been accepted. And so it's getting accepted is just the beginning. And so SEED spends considerable time, one, establishing a scholarship for some of our students who have, who, for whom affordability is a challenge. And then we do what's called intrusive advising. And we do where we do, um, we spend time with the student and the family, ensuring that they're prepared for the college experience. We actually just completed college outreach visits for students across the country. So we go and lay eyes on students on the campus. We create professional development opportunities for them. We have every summer this what's called a student graduate institute, where we bring students together and we do workshops and seminars on what they're facing. And then we spend time with students as they're beginning to transition out. So I will be on a plane, a train or somewhere going to student graduations of our current seat students over the coming weeks. Um, because we believe this is a, um, this is not just to sort of get them into college and say goodbye. We believe that when you are working with first generation, low income minority students, that you have to not only see them to college, but through college. Um, and we look forward to the partnership with Metro because Metro will also provide opportunity and exposure for internships and help our students to see what careers exist. And also I'm looking forward to our students creating careers that currently do not exist in transportation and mobility. Stephanie, final question. You're a transportation expert, uh, not necessarily an education expert, although your pay, pay grade is way above mine. Uh, with that said, you're the perfect person to ask because to get an objective opinion, 
Why is this education option, why is SEED such a special place, the way Leslie was explaining, different from others, Stephanie? Well, I think SEED LA is a special place because, uh, again, first of all, they have a track record of excellence in their engagement with their community, the graduation rates, not only from uh, the public boarding school, but also um, from college, which is really important. But we have the opportunity here to tailor, uh, you know, the diverse learning needs and interests with also exposing the students to opportunities within transportation and infrastructure more broadly. That is a unique opportunity for our industry and for our agency in particular. So it's a rigorous academic program uh, coupled with a nurturing boarding school environment. And then we have the unique opportunity to really have this STEM kind of enhancement element of it where we get to bring not only exposure and awareness to career opportunities and infrastructure projects and programs, uh, we are able to support them with hands-on experience and then ultimately employment, whether it's internships while they're in school, whether it, while they're in the public boarding school or in college, and of course, a full-time career. Uh, we want to see this as kind of our, our long-term succession planning opportunity. Mm -hmm. And SEED LA is uniquely positioned to, to be that for us in LA County. Yeah, I think we're uniquely positioned to SEED the next leaders, the next managers, the next executives. Um, it's an honor. Leslie Pohl and Stephanie Wiggins, your dedication and your conviction, they're both amazing uh, in this program of education. Thank you so much for really a great interview. Great. Thanks, David. Thanks. Good to see you, Stephanie. Great to see you, Leslie. And for more information about our program, just click on klcs.org and then click contact us to send us your questions and comments or story ideas so we can hear from you. Or contact me directly at David is our news on Twitter. That's David is our news on Twitter. And be sure to catch our program here on PBS or catch us on the PBS app for all things sustainable. Thank you so much for joining us for this edition of Sustaining Us here on KLCS PBS. I'm David Nazar.